friends, welcome to the Jazz Ranch. Welcome, it's Christmas time here, season's greetings. I'm your alter dominant ego man. You can call me Mr. Ego if you like. And I'm so glad you joined me. You know, the horses are out here lining up with the sleighs to take people out on sleigh rides. You, you need to come up here and join them and, you know, take a sleigh ride. You can do this right here at the Jazz Ranch. Plus, you got a jazz education right here. Anyway, I'm going to give you a famous quote from a great author. And it's not Chaucer, it's not Shakespeare, it's Charles Dickens. And it comes from his novel, A Christmas Carol. It's being uh, theatrical. Events are, about this have been done for years and they're everywhere in the world. You know, so this comes from a character who call, is called Marley's Ghost. Now, I know Marley's Ghost personally. You know, I met him, we hung out. You know, I'm a ghost, so I know him. But anyway, he said this in the novel. He said this, and he's talking to Scrooge at the time. I'll try to give you the vernacular or the, the, the uh, you know, how he said it. It is required of every man that the spirit within him shall walk abroad among his fellow men. You could say women and put women in there and travel far and wide, and if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. It is doomed to wander through the world <laughs> and witness what it cannot share, but might have shared on earth, and turn to happiness. Now, rewind this if you didn't catch that. But that is one of the most profound, meaningful statements ever written in literature. I can tell you that personally because I talked to Marley about it and I learned from him. Well, look, here, here's KH, he's coming up the walkway. Anyway, I will sign off now and say Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Season's Greetings to all, and all my best. Bye bye. Hello friends, welcome to the Jazz Ranch, hip cats and groovy chicks. Season's greeting, it's Christmas time here. And the horses are lining up to uh, the sleighs to take you on sleigh rides, so I hope you will join us. And I have a special song for you this evening, it's called Santa Claus is Coming to Town. It's really a fun song, I'm going to give you different versions of it, um, particularly um, some reharmonization and so on. And I'm glad that the altar dominant man showed up and gave you that quote by Charles Dickens because it is a very important quote from that book. And you should read the book, really. You probably have seen movies on it or theatrical events, but reading the book is another experience that is more in depth. And so that's one of the greatest quotes from Marley's Ghost that I've ever heard. And so I agree with uh, the altar dominant man on that one. So here we go now with. A song for Christmas called Santa Claus is Coming to Town.
So now in this video I want to talk about what I played which is more advanced concepts but I also want to touch on beginner concepts in case you're a beginner and this is over your head or you just I want to connect with you as well so the way I would play this song if I was a beginner player was to just learn the basic triads of the chord of the song the chord progression so it's just C to C7 but we don't even need to play the C7 and the F and to the F minor and then the C chord and then actually then after that an E minor A minor D minor G7 C that's the first eight bars so it's like C chord to F chord F minor then C chord back to the F chord F minor again then E minor now the A minor you might not want to play it down there but you could but if you want to invert it you could invert it up to here one version up like from up up there D minor would be here and then the G7 you could play here or you could do this play the A minor here in this position but take that note out of it take that note out of the G7 in other words the note that's going to uh, be in the way of the melody you take out of the left hand that's an important thing to understand now for intermediate uh, level you might want to try playing a little stride on this like this that's playing bass note and chord now you can play the chord in any inversion you like or that's comfortable but I usually like to play the one that's closest to the melody like this I can go up to there I'm not going to talk about stride piano on this video. I've talked about that on many others. But I just want to show you the, an, an intermediate concept, which would be like this. So basically I'm just playing the melody in the right hand in single notes and the left hand is playing bass note and chord. And so I can write out a simple arrangement for you on that. So now we'll continue and go into what I actually played and the advanced concepts. Now I want to talk about what I actually played and this is more advanced concepts but you might enjoy this if you're a beginner or intermediate anyway but uh, now why did I do that I just want to start on the C with a G pedal and then a C sharp diminished going to a D minor to a G7 now that's a setup for the key of C in other words it's like a pedal tone because of the G C chord then the C diminished is creating motion to the two chord then the five and then the five augmented leads right to the melody in C but what I did in the third measure was interesting I think because I used the Barry Harris concept of the diminished sixth scale I did this now what is that that is actually because it's a D minor chord relative to to F major, I'm using the F major system of the diminished sixth scale, like this this system. That one. So it's gonna go F like that. So I'm using this one here. 
but I'm playing it as a drop too, so that's B, much like a B flat diminished to a D minor there, and then a D flat diminished back to the D minor, and then to the G7 like that. And it's, it sounds really pretty when you play it in a drop too, like this. But first of all, you have like, you have these tents going on from the bottom note to the top, and then you have the, these interesting diminished chords in between the basic chords to lead you back to the basic chord. So it's a really pretty sound and, and quite advanced concept of harmony. Although, you know, composers have used that for many years. It's now more prominent thanks to Barry Harris. So now we'll continue with the A section. Now the basic chords for the first four measures are, are just a C to a C7, like maybe this kind of thing. So that's C major 7, or you could make it a C6. Takes you to the, F, the 4 chord of the F major 7. Then I use an F minor 6 there, back to the C chord. Repeats, but to make that less boring, or try to make it more interesting, I would go like something like this. Which is a 2 5 there. Then I would do a descending line in the bass line here. See how that makes it more interesting. So now you have this. Now it's a 3 6 2 5, but I put the G pedal there, the D minor, I'm sorry, E minor with the G pedal, A minor, 7, and I think I did a George Shearing locked hands, that, that's a good technique to use at any time that you think it's appropriate, gives you a, a, a nice big sound, big band sound chordal wise, and then this. Now the next thing I did was I created these speci very specific harmonies that I want to show you and there'll be a sheet on this you can look, look at while I'm going along with this, but here we go. So to give interest to the arrangement, and this is what professional arrangers do, I'm changing the second A section of this, I'm changing that to a different concept harmonically so that the arrangement tends to grow in depth. You know, it gets, starts simple, becomes more complicated, and then more complicated. You're going to see that as we go along here. So what I did on the second A is I, instead of going like this, I took spe very specific harmonies built on a drop two concept. Now drop two just means I'm taking the chords and I'm voicing them like this. like that. That's kind of advanced, but it's, it's basically what the chords are, but just making them sound richer in terms of voicings in the right hand. But then what I do is I take the, the second note from the top and I put it down at the, at the bottom. So if I'm playing it like that, so I'm taking that C down here and I'm going like this, and I'm taking it out of this chord here in the right hand, and, and so it sounds like this. A, a distinctly different sound than uh, the others, like it's distinctly different than this. Uh, it's different than this. So now I have this. And I put a diminished chord here. Why? Because the C7 with the flat 9 in it is going to be a good way to approach the next chord, which is F. See, so that's why I make that diminished chord there. Going to the F. Now here I want a minor chord, so I actually did that, which is another diminished chord. That's okay. Then I did this. 
probably couldn't hear that when I was playing it because it was too fast. But that's what I wrote out, and you can read this on the sheet. Like this. Now, just here, it's just, after that, it's just the three, six, two, five. And I try to do another George Shearing concept here. Blocked hands. Now on the bridge, we'll continue. So now on the bridge, what I did was I, I created a uh, approach chord to the bridge. The bridge is, goes to the five chord in minor, minor seven, two, five, one into F. Yeah. So I wanted an approach chord, so I used an F sharp diminished with that melody note there is a nice approach to the bridge. G minor, seven, this is a two five. Now here, um, what are you gonna do with that note? Well, you can just keep it in there or you can like make it relate to, change your voicing so that it relates to that note. So I changed it to a B seven, so I had this. Now you don't need to do that, you can just keep, make it dissonant like this. You can do, you can play that if you, with the, and have it be dissonant against, dissonant against the C7, like that, which is the, I, I believe the way the song was written, but, but as a jazz musician, jazz pianist, you can change that. You might even do a diminished chord there. Like, do like a diminished. But I did this. I like that because it's different than anything I've done before that. In other words, using dominant chords approaching from below. There's a diminished chord, the F sharp. Now the next part is just the whole, the same melody up a, ha a whole step. So you have, um, let's see, you could make it um, diminished chord. There's your dominant chords again. G sharp diminished. Now I did something specific here, and I wrote out, wrote this out for you. Now that's Barry Harris's diminished sixth scale. Now I'll explain that. So the two last measures of the bridge I voiced according to the sixth diminished scale built on G. So it has, you know, these chords that are D7 flat nine chords. Like that. So you have it here. You see, that's the D7 flat 9 in a drop 2 position. And here's, there's a G7 actually, and there's a D7 flat 9 again. But what a beautiful sound I think that is. Oh, that is such a classic sound, and great composers have used that for years. So somehow they knew it before Barry Harris existed. Before Barry Harris was around, yeah. So now for the last A section, I wanted to do something that was different than the previous things I had done, something new. So I just said, well, why not try fourth voicing? So I came up with these, I guess you'd call parallel quartal harmony, and I have to find a chord for that note. So there's perfect fourths, which sound really nice because it's a C chord anyway. So there you have a C6-9, so now how am I going to approach that? So I take, go backwards, like, that's fine, then, well, that's not so good, there. So I adjusted that to this, to a major 7, and then went to the fourth voicing there. So that's, as you see, is perfect fourth, D, G, C, F, and then E, A, D. So that's the first one. Now I changed the last note to this. I just went up a half step. I like that sound. Then I did something similar on the F chord. 
a little different but similar in concept. Then here, the last one. Then to that harmony. I think they sound really nice. It's unusual and it's personal. Now for the end of the song, I just repeated what I did at the beginning with the melody. Now, then I created this pedal tone at the end of the song, which is... Um, went up a minor third. Which is an interesting way of extending the ending, in other words, creating drama over the ending of the song and then ending and then I use the ending that band in the box gave me when you use real band the real band function you have to go with their ending so I just ended the way they they wanted me to so to speak so now just wrap up and we'll sign off Signing off from the Jazz Ranch. Thanks so much for joining me this evening. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and Happy New Year, and whatever you're celebrating in this festive season. Thanks so much for joining me. Please send a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I will always answer all comments. If you give me a t enough time, I'll maybe take a week or two to answer them, but I answer all of them. And until next time, I'll say in the words of my great friend, Hermie Dressel, He's celebrating up there, too. Swing loose, and we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.